Welcome back to another Hum Baby Baseball Countdown, and today we're talking about some of the most unbreakable career records in Major League Baseball. Simply due to the way the sport has evolved, there are records in baseball that, barring unimaginable changes that could take several hundred years, simply cannot and will not be broken. The 15 records I'll be talking about today will not be broken in any of our lifetimes, and if any of them are, comment down below that I was wrong. I probably won't respond because I'll probably be dead by the time any of these records get broken. What would have to happen for some of these records to be broken is so extreme, it is to the point that not even Rob Manfred could make the kind of changes that would have to happen. Also, to make the list more manageable, I'm only focusing on career and consecutive game records, not single season or single game records. And I'm also not including negative records like most balks or most wild pitches. So let's get into this and we'll progress towards number one, which will be the most unbreakable record in the game. But before before hitting the top 15, I have one single honorable mention that I felt like I had to mention in today's video. This is a record that will be very, very difficult to break, but I wouldn't quite call it unbreakable. Honorable mention, most career home runs. Barry Bonds, 762. The only reason this one didn't make the top 15 is because I think it is possible that a gifted and insanely powerful slugger comes along someday, someone similar to Aaron Judge, except less injury prone. And if a player like that does come along and averages about 45 home runs per season for 16 years, they could approach this record and have a shot at breaking it. However, it would take a very special player. With PED testing, that player would not have the benefit of steroids to help them, and they would have to be someone like Albert Pujols without the decline he had in his later years. But Pujols still hit 703, proving it is possible. Still, I would be surprised to see this record fall in the next 20 years. I do think within the next 20 to 50, it could happen. Young players are hitting more home runs than ever, and with changes in the game to improve offense, another big offensive era could be on the way soon. And with the right player, this record could be in jeopardy. Now let's move on to the main list. Number 15, most career doubles, Tris Speaker, 792. Starting right off the bat with a record from the early 20th century, Tris Speaker was an absolute doubles machine, leading the league eight times and hitting at least 50 four times. He consistently hit doubles for over 20 years. And for any player to get close, they would have to average 40 doubles for 20 straight seasons. I'm ranking this one at number 15 because players do commonly hit over 40 doubles. Freddie Freeman hit 59 last year. But with the way players get injured now and with the smaller ballparks and the bigger focus on the long ball, I don't see anyone touching this record anytime soon. However, if the right player comes along, hits around 40 doubles per season, stays incredibly healthy and consistent for 20 plus years, this one could be in danger someday, but I would not bet on it. Number 14, career total bases. Hank Aaron, 6,856. Next up is a record that might seem breakable considering that Albert Pujols, who only recently retired, is second all-time with 6,211, but even he came 645 total bases shy despite playing for 22 years. So how did Hammer and Hank accumulate nearly 7,000 total bases in his career. He combined elite performance, lack of injuries, and extreme longevity. For 22 straight seasons, Aaron averaged 146 games per season, even though during the early part of his career, the season was just 154 games long. In other words, Aaron almost never missed a game for over 20 years, and he was a doubles and home run machine the entire time. He led the league in total bases eight times and had over 300 total bases in 15 separate seasons. He even reached 400 total bases in 1959. Since that time, only eight players have reached 400 total bases in a single season, and it hasn't happened since 2001. To break Aaron's record, a player will have to average 343 bases for 20 years. For context on how difficult that is, Mike Trout, who has won three MVPs, has never reached 343 bases in a single season. And that's what you would have to average for 20 years to break this record. Number 13, most career no-hitters, Nolan Ryan, seven. 
The no-hitter is such a rare occasion that pitchers dream of doing it just once in their lifetime. And every time it happens, it's a huge story and almost always the first and last no-hitter of a pitcher's career. Very rarely does a pitcher do it more than once, and even then, it's usually one of the greatest. For example, future Hall of Famer Justin Verlander has done it three times, and the great Sandy Koufax did it four times, but neither came close to an absolutely ridiculous record of seven no-hitters thrown by Hall of Famer Nolan Ryan. He threw no-hitters across three different decades, four in the 70s, one in the 80s, and two more in the 90s, with the final one coming at the age of 44. The likelihood of any pitcher ever throwing more than three no-hitters is almost non-existent, but there is absolutely no way someone will throw seven again, much less eight to break the record. This is especially true in the modern analytical era where managers actually remove pitchers during a no-hit bid. One of the few talents who had the ability to throw multiple no-hitters has never gotten the chance because Clayton Kershaw has been pulled while working on a no-hitter. On one occasion, he had a perfect game through seven innings and had only thrown 80 pitches when Dave Roberts pulled the cord on the no-hit and perfect game bid. To date, Kershaw has just one career no-hitter. Number 12 most career hits, Pete Rose, 4,256. While Pete Rose was certainly an elite ball player who could hit like few others, one of the biggest reasons that he has so many hits is the fact that he stayed healthy and played for so long, 24 years, from the age of 21 all the way up until 45. Very few ball players last that long anymore, and it's more of a young man's game than ever. But even if a player did last 24 years, they would have to do so mostly healthy while maintaining excellence, accumulating around 200 hits per season. Rose managed around 700 plate appearances per season, rarely missing a game for over 20 years and had at least 190 hits 12 times. Even someone like Ronald Acuna Jr., who had 217 hits last season, is not on track to catch Rose because he's only had two fully healthy seasons. The active leader is Freddie Freeman, and he is only about halfway there with 2,146 hits. He would have to average 200 hits for the next 10 years to get close to Rose. And at that time, Freeman would be 44 years old. Number 11, career walks. Barry Bonds, 2,558. The only player who could ever challenge this record would have to be someone like Bonds, who has an elite knowledge of the strike zone and can also strike so much fear into the opposing team that they might walk him intentionally with the bases loaded. Bonds walked so much that the gap between him and his nearest challenger, the previous record holder, Ricky Henderson, is 368 walks. The active player who is closest to the record is Joey Votto, and he's barely halfway there. Bonds led the league in walks in 12 of his final 16 seasons and maxed out at an absolutely insane 232 walks in 2004. On the single season walks record list, he is number one, number two, and number three. In 2023, the walks leader was Juan Soto with just 132. He would have to repeat that for 20 more years to come close to Bonds. In other words, Barry Bonds walk record is completely safe and basically unbreakable. Number 10, the longest hitting streak, Joe DiMaggio, 56 games. Unlike most of the other records on this list, this one would only take about two months to break. And it's also one that no one has come close to. This day and age, even a 20 game hitting streak is rare. And that would put a player about 35% of the way to DiMaggio. The only player to make a serious run at this record was Pete Rose back in 1978. And he fell 12 games short, despite breaking a National League record with a hit in 44 straight games, a record that stands to this day and is also unlikely to be broken anytime soon. The most recent player to even challenge 44 was Paul Molitor, who had a hit in 39 straight games. Since then, 30-plus hitting streaks have only gotten more rare as pitchers improve, strikeouts increase, and batting averages drop. On the rare occasion, a player might hit 30, such as Whit Merrifield and Freddie Freeman back in 2016, but the streak usually ends around 30. To break DiMaggio's record, a player would have to have a hit in 30 consecutive games and then continue that for another 27. An unfathomable feat, even in Joe DiMaggio's time, much less today. 
Number nine, career on base percentage, Ted Williams, 482. The fact that not even Barry Bonds, one of the best hitters to ever live, and one who was given free passes like candy, could break this record tells you everything you need to know. When Ted Williams stepped up to the plate, there was almost a 50-50 chance he would reach base. The best active player at getting on base is probably Juan Soto, and he has a 421 career on base percentage, 19th best all time, and still 62 points short of Williams. In fact, there are only three active players with enough plate appearances to be considered for the record who even have an on base percentage above 400 Soto, Mike Trout, and Joey Votto. Simply put, no one can come close to this record again against modern day pitching. If Bonds couldn't do it, no one can. Number eight, most career strikeouts. Nolan Ryan, 5,714. It's amazing that this one makes the list as the record holder isn't someone from the early days of the game. It's Nolan Ryan who pitched through the 1993 season. Also, the record is something that happens a lot these days, strikeouts. Pitchers are striking out batters like never before. So why would this record be unbreakable? Simply put, no pitcher has ever come close to Nolan Ryan. Also, things have changed since Ryan's career. With the advent of pitch counts, pitchers don't go as deep into games and they get injured far more often. A pitcher like Clayton Kershaw, who has a better career strikeout per nine ratio than Ryan, has 2,944 career strikeouts. Still an impressive number, but nowhere close to Ryan because he pitched in less than half the amount of total innings. Ryan threw 222 complete games in his career compared to Kershaw's 25. The closest active leader to Nolan Ryan is Max Scherzer with 3,367, still nowhere close to Nolan Ryan. Number seven, most career triples, Sam Crawford, 309. The only hit more rare than a home run is the triple, and the current active leader in career triples is Charlie Blackman with 63. He could play until he's 63 and still wouldn't come close to Sam Crawford's 309 triples. Due to the way the game changed in the 1920s with the arrival of Babe Ruth and the end of the dead ball era, ballparks have gotten smaller and triples have gotten more and more rare. Outfielders also have stronger arms and players who prioritize speed over power are less common. These days, hitting more than 10 triples in a season is a major feat. In 2023, the MLB leader in triples was Bobby Witt Jr. with 11. He would have to repeat that number year after year for 28 years to catch Crawford. Number six, highest career batting average, Ty Cobb, 366. Assuming a minimum of 3,000 plate appearances, there is no way any player gets close to a career 366 batting average anytime soon. In fact, I'd say nobody touches Ted Williams' career average of 344. With the insane improvements in velocity and spin rate in decent decades, just hitting over 300 is a huge accomplishment. The last time a player hit over 366 just in a single season was 20 years ago when Ichiro hit 372 in 2004. Some players have come close since then, but we're just talking about doing it in a single season. Last year, Luis Arias won the Silver Slugger with an absolutely incredible 354 batting average, still 12 points shy of Ty Cobb's career average. On the list of career batting average leaders, no one who has played in the past 50 years is in the top 20. Number five, most consecutive games played, Cal Ripken Jr., 2,632. The only reason this record even comes in this low is because if I was to make this same list back in the early 80s, I have no doubt I would have ranked Lou Gehrig's consecutive games record at number one. Yet that record was breakable because of the absolute machine that was Cal Ripken Jr. So could another Iron Man come along someday and play every day for over 16 years? It seems highly unlikely. Nowadays, with the analytics taking over, players are given more days off, and it's extremely rare to even see someone play in 162 games of a single season, much less 16. Furthermore, injuries are more prominent than ever, and teams won't let their star player just play through injuries like Ripken was allowed to do. But the biggest reason why this record is so unbreakable, even the best players today don't play in that many games in their career period, much less consecutively. Only two 
active players, Joey Votto and Andrew McCutcheon, have even played in 2,000 games at all. Not consecutively. The current active leader in consecutive games played is Matt Olson, and he's somewhere around 450 games, just 2,182 games short of the record, which is still more than Lou Gehrig's original record. Number four, most career stolen bases, Ricky Henderson, 1,406. Coming in at number four is the career stolen base record held by the greatest of all time, Ricky Henderson, who stole 1,406 bases during his career that lasted a quarter of a century. Henderson's career spanned four decades and he played at the same time as Willie McCovey and Miguel Cabrera. During that time, of course, he was a base stealing machine, leading the league in steals 12 times and stealing at least 30 bases 22 times. He also stole at least 100 bases on three separate occasions. These days, the stolen base has declined across the board and every year, there are multiple teams who can't even steal 100 bases. For instance, the San Francisco Giants stole just 57 bases all year in 2023. There are a few legitimate base stealers in the game like Ronald Acuna Jr. who nabbed 73 last year, but that was a career high by far and a number far higher than the typical season stolen base leader. But even if he could repeat that, he'd have to do it for 17 more years to catch Ricky, an impossible feat given that players slow down with age. In 2022, the league leader was John Birdie with 41 steals. To have a chance to catch Henderson, a player would have to be stealing close to 100 bases every year in their 20s, something that just doesn't happen anymore. And the last player to steal 100 bases in a season was Vince Coleman in 1987. Rob Manfred can make the bases as big as he wants and limit pickoffs as much as he wants, but until teams start running more and allowing young, fast players to steal whenever they want, Ricky Henderson's record will remain untouchable. Number three, most career wins, Cy Young, 511. Imagine a pitcher averaging 20 wins per season for 25 years. That's what a pitcher would have to do to just approach Cy Young's record of 511 career wins. In the modern game, starting pitchers often don't even make it through the five innings required to be considered for the win. Combined with sometimes five and six man rotations, pitch limits, innings limits, and a high frequency in injuries and Tommy John surgeries, there's no way any pitcher can ever come close to 511 wins. The closest a pitcher has come in my lifetime was Greg Maddox, who finished his career with 355 wins, an impressive number that no pitcher will likely reach anytime soon. Even today's elite starters, who have long and successful careers, come nowhere close to Maddox, much less Cy Young. Active leader, Zach Granke, has 225 wins. Next is Max Scherzer with 214. Not even halfway to Cy Young. Number two, most career shutouts. Walter Johnson, 110. Up next is the insane 110 career shutout record by Walter Johnson. The sad fact is pitchers rarely complete games anymore, but to break this record, a pitcher would not only have to complete more than 110 games, which is never going to happen, but not allow a single run during any of those outings. The fact that only one active pitcher even has double digit career shutouts tells you how unbreakable this record is. And that pitcher, Clayton Kershaw, has 15 career shutouts. Nowhere even close. Even the great Justin Verlander has just nine. There are many great arms like Robbie Ray, Logan Webb, Shohei Otani, Luis Severino, all with just one career shutout. It just doesn't happen anymore, and when it does, it's a massive achievement. Last year, only two pitchers in the entire game threw more than a single shutout, Garrett Cole and Framber Valdez. To catch Walter Johnson, a pitcher needs to throw six shutouts per season for 19 straight years. It ain't happening. Number one, most career complete games. Cy Young, 749 complete games. At number one, I have to put a record that I'm confident in saying no player will ever come close to in my lifetime or the lifetime of anyone else alive today. The simple reason, as I've already said, pitchers don't complete games anymore, at least not very often. In the early days of the game, starting pitchers were expected to complete every game they started. This is far from the case today. 
that's not the only reason this record will never be touched. Other reason is the sheer number, 749 complete games, more complete games than most of today's starters will ever start at all. Even if Clayton Kershaw had completed every single game he ever started, he would have only 422 complete games. And even someone with amazing longevity like Bartolo Colon, who played for 21 years, would have only had 552 complete games if he had completed every game he started. Still short. In reality, Cologne only had 38 and Kershaw had 25. So this record is unbreakable. I have a better chance of catching Mr. Beast in YouTube subscribers than any MLB pitcher does of ever throwing 749 complete games. Even if the greatest pitcher to ever live with the greatest stamina ever seen came along, he would not be allowed to complete that many games in the modern analytical era. With five and six man rotations, I'd say it's unlikely any pitcher even starts 749 games again much less completes that many. And that does it for today's video on my top 15 unbreakable records. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts down below. I know there are several other unbreakable records. These are just the main 15 career records that come to mind for me. But feel free to put more in that comment section down below. Hit the thumbs up and subscribe button. And let's see if we can catch Mr. Beast.